Welcome back to Padilla Palace Projects, and we are excited to be sharing with you today some of our family favorite games. Now, we've always played some of the regulars, uh, Candyland, Life, uh, Monopoly, and all of those, um, but we're going to throw in some of these that are our go-tos that our family really, really loves. Some of them are spin-offs off of the classics. I hope that you and your families enjoy um, playing these games as much, as much as my family has. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be talking about a few of them and then I'll be popping in some video clips or some pictures of the board games and some of us playing them and so forth, um, whatever I can get my hands on <laughs> before we go to post this video. So uh, stay tuned and let us know in the comments as we go if you've ever played these games and what you think of them. Okay, so the first one I'm going to share with you is not necessarily one of our go-tos, but it's probably one of the most unique games that we have gotten. Um, it was a gift, and it took us a while to open it up and really play it because we're like, huh, at first. Um, but we brought it to some church functions, and um, we played it as a family. And um, as adults, it's fun because it brings back a flashback, but it is a board game, and it's the Oregon Trail. Um, kids now, my daughter does not totally get dying of dysentery. Um, she doesn't totally get the game, but it is fun and it is easy to play. So if you have not gotten this game, I do suggest for nostalgia purposes to grab this. Um, let me know if you've played this and what you think of this. Uh, stay tuned for those clips. Okay, so this is the org everything in the Oregon Trail box. This is the game. And um, you have a start for Independence, Montana. And you put that on one end of your table. Right now we're using our footstool in our living room. And then um, Willamette Valley, Oregon would be the finish line. So you're putting that on the other side of the table. You write down all of the names um, of everybody who's going to be in the party. And uh, they give you a little dry erase marker with the eraser on it. Um, you also get a dice and you have to um, put the stickers on it when you get it. Um, so you're going to write everybody's names and then you'll want to start with the back side um, blank. And it comes with the instructions. We're not going to actually um, play the whole game for you right this minute. Um, but we did want to show you a few of the things. So um, the trail cards are all going to have, it's like you're playing on the computer. Press spacebar to continue or draw a calamity uh, card. Um, you need to be able to connect them and to keep going in a path and so like this one wouldn't connect so this one wouldn't be able to use and if you draw a calamity card your calamities are all the same ones from the old school game so you have bad water um your oxen drink bad water flush away bad water with one clean card um if two bad water cards are collected then two oxen um and then two oxen dying. One round of play without an oxen card and everyone in your party has died. And then um, this one is Calera. We have bad water again. Let's see, dead oxen. Oh my gosh, you have, you have typhoid. I mean, it's all the same stuff from when we were a kid. You have broken arm, you have dysentery. Um, all that stuff. So those are the calamities. Um, you have um, supply cards to help you get through. We'll go through what you had in just a second. So you have clean water, you have medicine, um, clothes, oxen, spare parts, uh, 200 pounds of food, 100 bullets, so all the different things. 
And these are used in different ways to help you um, get through a calamity. And then um, you can come to a, do you know where it was? Top one. Okay. So there's rivers that you can come to. Um, so you can roll a number and if you get an odd one, um, you lose one supply card. If you roll an even number, you get to go across the river without an issue. So it is fun. It takes a minute to get going. Um, and then as long as one person in your party survives until you get to Willamette Valley, Oregon, um, then you win. So this is one, uh, it is a fun game. Um, we like playing it with more people. Obviously you have better chances of being able to make it <laughs> to the end of the game. All right. So our next game is one that, um, my stepsisters taught me and I fell in love with it. Um, my husband and I can play it. Um, what's great is it can be a two person, a three person, four, can't really do five or a six person game. Um, actually it says up to 12. I don't know. I've never played that way, but that is sequence. Um, you can play it the traditional way, or you can play it like my husband and I do and see how many uh, rows of five that you can get on the board. Uh, we get super competitive when you're doing team and you're trying not to table tug. Um, it can get kind of funny, uh, but this is it's an easy game. Um, your jacks are wild basically and you can remove uh, the other color pieces off the board or you can add yours in and the goal is to get to um, two rows of five across the board. So I'm going to pump in some clips of this. Um, my husband and I do this quite frequently for date night um, and then when we get my daughter in there it gets fun too. We've done it with um, our friends who did teams of couples. Uh, so this is a super fun game, um, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space, and it has pictures of regular cards on it. So they do have a kids version, I don't have the kids version, but we do have a kids version, there is a kids version of Sequence as well. So this is highly suggested, um, stay tuned for those fun clips, and let me know if you have this and how much you love it. Or was that not the right decision to make? It was because I just got it, number two. <laughs> oh, you had it. <laughs> I did do the right one. <laughs> That's so my daughter's favorite game is Clue. She loves murder mystery movies. Um, she likes the Hallmark Murder Mystery Channel. Um, so Clue was a fun way to be able to do that. Uh, we had growing up a different version of Clue than a lot of the ones they have now. We do have the nostalgic version of Clue, but her favorite, so I'm including her favorite in this one, is the, it's called Clue the Classic Mystery Game. This is not the traditional board though. And what's nice for when you, being a parent, and sometimes there's just nights when you don't have the necessarily time for a super long game um, the pieces the little board spots are so much closer together that it doesn't take forever to get to rooms so that's one of the things that we really liked about this is you can play a full game um, and it doesn't take as long which is great um, on school nights and the back is a different board um, so this is hers. We all have our colors. My daughter is Scarlet. Uh, my husband is Mr. Green. And I am Miss Peacock. Um, 
So I will pop in some fun pictures of us playing this game and show both sides of the board. Um, but again, there's so many different versions of Clue, um, but Clue is a great game and it makes your brain think. Um, and it teaches kids critical thinking, in my opinion. So we really, really, really liked this game. All right, so my daughter hurt her leg today and um, is not up for playing a game of Clue on the video. Uh, so I am just going to show you the board while well, my hubby and I are going to show you the board. Um, this is the Clue that we play. You can tell there's not very many um, squares in between each door. So you can actually make it from the courtyard to like the bathroom um, in one roll kind of. Um so the game comes with dice. There's not dice in the box right now. We just grabbed dice out of um, my jar of dice. Um, but it has the courtyard, the living room. The living room has the secret passage to the bedroom. Um, you have the dining room. The kitchen has a secret passage to the garage. Um, you have the office, bathroom, and then this one is the game room instead of it being a billiard. And then you can tell how used our game is. Um, these are all the different places uh, for this side. You have all the weapons. And then um, one of the people cards had a crease. And so we knew who it was because it had a crease. So we had to crease all of the people cards. Um, that way, none of us were cheating with that. Mm -hmm. So everybody has, everybody has a crease. And it has all your basic people in it. Um, so then when you go to switch sides, um, the cards it comes with, where well, we're actually, I didn't realize we were out of these. Um, you have the mansion side, and then you have the beach, the boardwalk side. So if you flip over the board, you can play the boardwalk version. And the beach is a location. We really don't play this side that often. She was never really into this side. Um, the jet ski rental. You have the Ferris wheel. The surf shop. The arcade. And the beach house. And everything's trimmed in the red over here. And the cards for the places are trimmed in red as well. So, and you can tell the difference in the cards because those have not been used and those have been. <laughs> so, it comes with all your pieces. It comes with your um, answer envelope that you get to put them in. Um, this game is super fun. It is a lot quicker than the um, original version of the game. Um, but yes, definitely one of our top family games. So this game <laughs> was a gift. Um, it was from my brother. And um, at first we were like, what is this game? And at first we thought it was gonna be a little too young for um, my daughter at the time we got it. But it has become one of our family favorites. And it is Castle Panic. So you work all together as a team. So all your cards are up and you have this board which has your castle in the middle and it has different layers um, throughout the field. And you are getting zombies and goblins and orcs and they're all trying to come in and tear down your castle walls and there'll be boulders that fly through and you are working together as a team um, to protect your castle. And if you make it through the end and all of the bad guys are gone and you at least have one tower standing, you win. Um, there have been plenty of times we did not win this game, <laughs> but um, there are many times that we did win the game. And so it could be luck of the draw. Um, it can be... Um, there could be a lot of strategy with it. it depends on how well you work together as a team but it's also fun because little kids can play with you um, it's it says ages 10 and up but you can play 
with younger kids be if you have if you're helping them because we can see everybody's cards um we can help them thought process through how to play the game um so this one super fun it always brings lots of laughs it always brings lots of anxiety when you go to draw and you draw a boulder or the goblin king or the orc warlord or whatever so um this one we have played so many times so many times um and it teaches teamwork and i love any game that teaches teamwork because uh, i think teamwork is very very important and again it's another one with Stra uh, strategic thinking you're having to think ahead you when you're switching cards sometimes it's not what's best for the person that's switching it at the time but the best for the person whose turn is coming next um so i'm gonna pop in some clips of this one um and let me know if you have played this game um and if you haven't i, I mean all of these i highly suggest getting but if you for sure have kids this is definitely one um that you should get and protect your castle Starting out missing one. Right here, one of our towers. So it's five? Uh, yeah. Okay, so with this, um, you have your map. You have your forest area. Um, the forest area is the new people coming in that um, you can't really attack yet. And then the archers, knights, swordsmen, and then you're in the castle walls. Um, once you break through the castle wall, then you start breaking down the castle towers. And this is what you need to have one of to survive. At the end of the game you need to beat and i said zombies in the first clip and i was wrong it's goblins trolls and orcs um i had forgotten it was trolls everything's a zombie <laughs> everything's a zombie okay so these are the pieces where the anxiety kicks in at the end of every turn you have to do that so it's Is it three goblins three goblins one troll two orcs that you start with um again the instructions with this are very clear um easy to use it has the order of play in the opposing quarters here and then um it shows you about your special monsters um and then also it talks about the boss monsters and there is an orc warlord yeah. a goblin king and a troll mage and when those pop up i always have to remember what they and do the but healer. it's not good and then the healer so normally we the regular table for this but we're playing in here today and we're going to deal out five cards to every player and then we put these face up and then you're going to draw up Discard and draw one card, which is optional. Trade cards, which is optional. Play cards, move monsters, and then draw two new monsters. So, um, I have a blue knight, a brick, a hero, which can go in any archer, knight, or swordsman, another brick, and a blue swordsman. Every I have an, any color archer. Uh, mortar, red archer, red knight, and green knight. What they mean by red and green is the area that you can use it in is different colors. So we've got red, green, and blue. And every um, triangle right here has a number. So there's going to be points when you have to roll the dice. Um, and then some of these monsters have different numbers. That's how many hits it'll take to kill it. So a goblin takes one hit. And so we always have the number that it's on pointing towards the castle. Um, orcs take two hits and trolls take three hits to kill. Um, who's going first? You can. Okay. 
Um, so at the beginning of my turn, the monsters move forward, forward into the thing, and that means it's the start of my turn. I have five cards, so I don't draw up. Um, I don't have any archers. Um, my husband has an archer. And um, he actually has two archers, and he has knights. So... I can trade you a archer for a knight because I'll be able to use your knight. Yes, that okay. works. And then, since you have a mortar and I have a brick, should I discard the other brick? Sure. Okay, so we'll discard that. The brick and mortar are used to rebuild walls. And I got a tar. And anything that has this castle print on it means that... Um, it can help in this castle area. Nothing else will work yeah. in that castle area. All right, so now I am going to play the red archer and I'm gonna hit the troll with one hit. So I'm gonna turn it to a two and I'll discard my archer. I will use my green hero yeah. and I will kill the goblin. Mm -hmm. And because I killed it, I get to keep it. Now, some people will tally these up, and whoever has the highest um, number of points yeah. win. But we don't do that because a lot of times I could kill something, and I leave it for him. Um, so we're doing it as a team player, not to be competitive in this one. Yeah. Okay. So I, I did discard. I traded cards. I you traded Played my cards. Now we need to move the monsters forward. And I have to draw two. So now they're in the night ring. And I have to draw two of these things. <laughs> I got a boulder. <laughs> so now I have to roll the dice and see where the boulder goes. Oh, one. Oh, okay. So it comes here. I'm gonna go through the one, it kills the troll, the troll and it knocks out my wall. And so these will wall. go into the box because these don't count for anybody. Okay. One more? Yeah, I gotta draw a as long as I'm in a boulder. It's a troll. You roll the dice and you place it on the numbers. Which so is? five is over here, so three is pointing forward, so he's there. Okay, now it's your turn, hubby. All right, so there's nothing on archers, but I have a blue knight, a red knight, and a green knight, so I can hit. Why don't you trade? Me, I'll need the swordsman. You don't have a swordsman. Um, you might need a tar in the future. So why don't you trade me the mortar and I'll give you the tar. That way I can rebuild the wall the next time around. Hmm. Or, no, 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 I did that wrong. Give it back. You need the archer. Yeah. I'll give you the brick in place of the archer. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you're just going to... Play and not discard anything, right? Yeah, attack every uh, attack this one and this one dies. With the red one, I hit this, and the orc goes to a one because it has two hit points. Blue knight, should I go for you want to kill or do you want to knock that one to one? Probably. I think I'll do the that one to a one. Okay, yeah, and then. Do you want to build the wall? Yes. And you're out of cards. Out of cards. So we're going to move forward. Move forward. And then draw two. And then draw two. One at a time. <laughs> Healer. Okay, so healer goes on the board. You have to roll to see where you're going to put it. It goes on six, and then every, is it everything on the board? Down here. Okay, 
roll Dolife and place the healer in the fortress. All monsters get healed one. All monsters get healed one. So this one turns back to a two. And this one turns back to a two. Well, maybe we should have had you just killed a one. Oh well. Okay. And then for my second one's monsters move counterclockwise. That way. Ay, ay, ay. Did that mess up our colors that we did? No, I still think they're just fine. Okay. Right. <laughs> I have to not draw up. Good. No, no, draw no, no. up. You have no cards to trade me. No. Um, I have... I can't use that right now. I think I'm going to discard that. And yes. do a new one. Drive him back, which may be good right now. Okay. So I'm going to kill what I can kill first. Uh, blue Swordsman, he's dead. And then any color archer, I can hit him once. And then, um, what do you think about driving him back and tarring him? Yeah. Okay. So, drive him back. He goes back to the forest. Yeah. And then tar, he gets stuck for a turn for moving people forward. Okay. So, now these all get moved forward. And that one stays. stays put. And then I have to draw two. Okay, so that's the basic of the game. We're going to go ahead and um, finish our game and uh, see if we win. <laughs> Depending on the castle or not. But that's kind of the gist. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and we're going to move on to the next game. So this next one we got um, over New Year's a couple years ago, and it's for three to five players. My daughter is not super fond of it. I really wish um, in the future, we're probably gonna buy this game again, and that'll make sense why in a minute. Um, we're probably gonna buy this game again and have a set group of people who always play it, um, trying to do at least the five players um, and have it set up um, to where we're like monthly uh, meeting and playing because you actually score the board and what people do um, change. So the more players that are engaged, uh, the more all of the cards get different things on them. So um, if you like strategy, Risk is always a fun game. Um, we actually, my brothers and I were playing Risk uh, the night I was going into labor with my daughter. Um, but this one is called Risk Legacy. And it is a totally different spin. There's different ways that you can win. Um, but I'm going to show you a couple of things in here. I don't want to give everything away because it's kind of fun um, to be able to see. But you actually... I'm going to get you the board. You actually... Oh, it's four years ago. Wow. So you actually sign the board and say when this journey began. Okay? And then these are all the player players. And then um, it says, We the undersigned take responsibility for the wars that are about to start, the decisions we will make, and the history we will write. Everything that is going to happen, happened because of us. So when you're playing, you have different um, envelopes you get to open. I'm going to try to hold this up. But you actually get to scar the board. Um, whoever wins each round gets to write their name and they get special bonuses for how many times their name is on the board. My husband's name is on the board quite a bit um you get to put um certain 
scars on, you have your capitals and cities, um, you have, where is it? There's a couple things on here. You actually get to name your cities. Once you've conquered certain areas, you actually, if your name is on the country, I'm trying to pop it up here. If your name is on the country, you get to actually get extra points and you get to name the country. I think we did that on this one. And so you get extra soldiers for doing that. And as you're playing the game, you get to unlock in the box. There are envelopes set up here. And so as you do certain tasks, you get to open the envelopes and see what happens. Um, you have different coin values that you get to put on all your cards that have the um, countries on it, the territories. And then you have your rule book, which is awesome. You have your character pieces, um, which are adorable. Every single one of them is a little bit different, and I'll show pictures of those. Um, you get to unlock some new ones. This is just one of the regular ones. Um, you get to unlock new ones, though. And um, as you're unlocking the new ones, um, there can be some fun stuff. I'll show you one of them. One of them's aliens. It's got a spaceship and an alien. Um, and those you'll be able to pick. It's, again, it's one of the numbered or lettered boxes. And you get to pick um, which thing you're going to open for that task and then there's another one that is in there that says um, basically open at your own risk that you shouldn't open it so there's many different ways you can win this you can win um, by taking over everything and killing everybody right um, but then everybody has the capitals and there you get you could earn stars and each capital is worth a star and um, certain cards that you collect, you can trade like your um, territory cards and some other things. And do, completing certain tasks, you can get these stars. And by having four stars, I think it is, you um, can win the game. Whether you may have the least amount of um, spots on the map, but because you got those stars, you can win. So my husband usually won out of the bronze, and then when I won, I usually won out of the brains. Um, and then it's luck of rolling, what numbers you roll, and so forth in the game. So I will pop up some fun pictures of this. I don't want to give away too many of the fun things in it, um, but we'll take some pictures and show you some of the uh, things in here. But this game is highly suggested, especially for teens and adults. Um, it's a game that takes longer. This game can be finished faster than the regular risk because if you complete the stars, the more you score that board, the more it changes how the game works. And that's why we would probably buy a new one and start over because there's some things that we did at the beginning that kind of frustrate us now that when we're playing it, we're like, oh, I wish we wouldn't have done this because I wish I would have known better, you know? And so, um, but it's super fun. And this is a fun memory to do. Um, I mean, people have Bunko Nights, they have all kinds of games. This one, this one is a good one to do for a couple's game night. Um, so, or a friend's game night. I highly suggest it, and um, stay tuned for those clips. And let me know if you've played this game and what you think. Okay, so we got everything out and kind of organized in the Risk Legacy. And um, the way this game starts is um, you get to pick your character and these are the five character sets that you get originally and um, these are the matching things that come with them. The Saharan Republic, um, you have all of those, okay? You get to pick one before you start. Yes, well this is one of the things you get to pick with this. Yeah. You're going to go around in a circle so the first person... Um, picks whichever one they want to pick the second person picks so some people think first placement is the most important um, some people think the coin cards are the most important some people think their character is the most important and what's going to happen is the longer you play this game like this was my husband's favorite one uh, for quite a while and so 
whoever has the most wins on the back while they're playing that character um, gets extra bonuses when they start the game. Um, and then these things don't start off on here. As you go, you get um, new things. You get to release new things. And I'll show you that a little bit too. But I wanted to show you kind of there's the aliens, and then there's one other bonus one that I'm not going to show you. Um, but you have five. That's why you can only have five players. Um, it's because it starts with five, and you get to unlock things as you go. Um, so turn placement, how many troops you start with, um, who, who goes first, and how many coins you get are all decided at the beginning of the game along with who you are. I mean, can you help me clean, put these in a pile really fast? All right, so some of the other things while he's cleaning those up for me is um, the resource cards. The resource cards, I think, pretty much start with, I think they start with one on all of them. Maybe some of them have two. This one was a sticker that was put on. So as you go and as you win yeah. and if you stay alive until the end, um, you get certain things. So... Um, this is what you get if you won the end of, if you end, won the end of the game, you get to choose these items. Um, before your first game, end of game, if you held on to the end, okay? So before the first game, though, we got to choose who, where we put the extra coin cards. And these things all scar the board. So these are large cities and small cities. So this is a one, and then this one is a two. Um, you get to name them. Um, so it's super fun to be able to do some of this stuff. Okay. Then over here, um, you have mission cards. So you shuffle these, and usually uh, one's face up. And whatever is the one on the top, if you complete this, um, then you get that star. And the rule of the game is whoever gets four stars first wins. Correct. And you can get a star by when you're on a and color. It, well, and well, when you have a color, the, at the start of your game, you create the capital. And you put that down. Your and a star. by controlling another team's capital... You own a second star. You own a second star. So if you have five players, you can just take over all the capitals, which is my husband's favorite way to win. Just take over the capitals and um, you win. So that's fun. But these are different ways that you can um, and then trade, win a star. Trade coin cards also to get stars. Correct. You could trade four coin cards to get stars. Um, then there's event cards. Um, so some of these you just discard, some of them you destroy. So for like this one, it says the alien player may choose a minor city, place the ruin mark over the city mark. That city is gone. Remove all troops and demolish any headquarter in that territory. If a city is ruined, destroy this card. Otherwise, discard it. So we haven't actually gotten this one before. We we got this um, released when we released the aliens. And so this is something that we haven't gotten. But this card would go over a city. And that's a city. So it would then become demolished permanently. We would take that sticker off. Um, so this game changes every single time you play it changes um, a couple of the scars that made it really hard to win were uh, was this one this came with a different character and I'm, we're not saying what character that is yet um, but every turn you're on here you lose troops yeah. Um, troops. yeah I think you yeah half is that right Okay, this one creates another location. It's another um, thing. And so I think it lets you get extra. Um, did this allow you to get extra? One extra troop. Troop as each long start. As you're an alien. Oh, if you're an alien. Okay. And then, like, this was a 
chemical thing like you lose one troop when you're on it and we didn't like it being here so we i one of us put a that was one of the things we were able to earn was a blackout sticker so we got to remove that person's I mark and remove that mark this was mainly my territory so we put the things there and you blocked them out yeah. okay so and then the other thing is well, here was because we had the whoever used the first nuclear missile i used to use this all the time yeah. and you killed I, me on it yes nobody can keep that anymore um so every single time somebody won we wrote it down here and this gives you um bullets um missiles. Assert, missiles at the beginning of your turn so if you haven't played risk before you roll the you roll the dice depending on how many soldiers you have on each character on each um territory and you however many you get is based off of your um the, the formula that they have in the rule book for how many um uh, properties that you have control over at the beginning of your game so then three black dice, two red dice. yeah so there's uh three attack and two um defense, defense. and then um if you let's say uh, the attacker um rolls a five and the defense rolls a six if my husband's the attacker and he has a missile he can shoot the missile over and it changes one of those dice he can change it to a six. That's a bad example because the defense wins if it's yeah. tied. But, um, but it can make it higher to be a winning. But like defense five, and he rolls a five, or the and then you change it to a six. Six, and you end up winning the attack, so you don't lose the troops. So missiles are fun, and you get missiles for different things. This is having the most wins is one of the ways to get um, missiles. Wow. So the instruction book also becomes. It wasn't completely uh, filled in when we got it. And so it goes over a whole lot. There's fun pictures in here. It tells you how everything works. Um, and then throughout here, these are all added in. These were all blank gray squares. And as you play and open envelopes, you will get stickers to put in this book explaining new rules. For now, you can ignore the brackets and the gray type. So all this stuff did not have um, rules in here before. And as we've played the game, we unlocked rules all the way through the book. But this is very descriptive. It has really good instructions. Um... Some of the things as the game changed, we didn't necessarily like. Like, all of this is new. It wasn't in here when we first got it. This wasn't there. So, it was really relearning the game. It keeps you on your toes. Um, uh, we definitely will get this again. Uh, my hubby and I want to find um, a few people to just play this with um and start over and have it be our monthly thing like i talked about before uh, but this was definitely a totally different spin on risk wouldn't you say like yeah i, I would definitely play it again uh the old traditional one i liked a lot but this one since it's like okay what's next type of thing you know so every time you play it something new happens and it just depends on how you play it and it's just really fun when you have a lot of people who are competitive because me i'm like my wife says i'm like like the bronze <laughs> attacker she's more of the witty who thinks like okay i can't match him on like a steel but if i get these other ways to win faster then i can beat him so everybody has their own strategic way of winning and no way is the wrong way. You can do whatever you want, but at the end is you got to get to that point to uh, you get the four stars or you take over or destroy all their troops to win. Yes. And so this is just an example of obviously our most used ones. And when we play again, these will all be on different. It's it's not guaranteed that these will be on the same thing. So no, these characters will be completely different. It'll be um, 
it will definitely be an interesting um, game. The fun part about it is if you, oh, if, look at this one. if somebody's really fond of a specific one and you're first to pick, you can take that one from them so they don't get all the perks that they get. Yeah, that's what get. I used to do with the con with you if I could. Um, so like aliens, controlling every city on the, the board earns you two stars. So that's every single one of these. So that is... Um, really cool. If you can't get the capital, if you at least can get all the cities, you get two stars. Um, so it's a lot of fun, different ways to win. Um, this is definitely one of the ones that we really, um, think is worth the, um, it wasn't that expensive. I don't know how much it is now, but it's worth the investment if it is it's considered one. Um, time consuming. it is time consuming, but not as long as regular risk. No. Um, but it does get more Regular. adventurous as you burn because these things, as you scar these cards as this board, it's so amazing how permanent they become and what a difference it makes in the game. Um, the world capital. Yeah, there's the world capital. This little thing right here, like, lets you give. Yeah. yeah. This one, if your uh, main city is here. That means you get an extra troop per the turn For, with the capitals yeah, there. So every time you you uh, uh your turn comes, you get an additional two troop, troop just in that aside location. Aside from trading, because you could also trade in your stars to get additional troops. So if no, coin cards. Coin cards, yeah. Yeah. So if well, you hold on. This is territory and population. So if you oh, have twelve to fourteen spots, if you have twelve to fourteen spots, you get four troops at the beginning of your turn. Right. If you have fifteen to seventeen, right. you get five troops. So it's all on the board yeah. too. So let's say each. And each... this is trading in your coins to get a certain number of troops. That's what he's talking about. And then four resource cards, no matter how many coins, gives you a star. Yep. So and then each location gives you specific amount of points. That way, if you control the whole if thing, you control the whole thing. And this was one of the add-ons that we were able to do. Is that plus one? Um, yeah. We were able to add that on. So it's fun. It's different. Um, it's engaging. It makes the brain work, and um, is definitely something that will <laughs> keep you going. <laughs> So when my daughter found out I wasn't putting this in as one of our top family games, um, she was not super happy. So I'm throwing this in in honor of her. Um, it is apples to apples. Now, we only have three people in our household, so um, we don't always play this when it's just the three of us because it's for four to eight players. And it's pretty easy to tell um, who chose what, kind of. Um, so the more players you have, the more fun it is to play the traditional way. But now what we do do with this game is we go through and we don't even play the game normally and we tell stories with the green and the red cards. So I'm going to plug in some clips and um, of us telling stories um, with that and then uh, let me know if you play apples to apples and how you play it, what's your favorite way to play apples to apples. So Apples to Apples is a very commonly known game. Um, I'm not going to go over how to play Apples to Apples the actual way. Um, but one of the things we do is to tell stories with the cards. I'm going to try to talk my husband into doing a series of stories. <laughs> but basically, I'll give you an example. So the red cards are all people or an item. Okay. Um, and then the green cards are a description. So how we tell the stories, and they can get interesting. Sometimes they can just be stupid. Sometimes they're super interesting. So we would go, the electric chair is popular in junk mail. 
that you find on camping trips with our eyes. It's unbelievable how the ocean is skiing in Mars. <laughs> Normal popcorn is found at Costco while cleaning the bathroom. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So now my hubby's going to try one. Katy Perry. Country music. Flying monkeys. Inspiration. Is an ins is inspirational. Inspirational. <laughs> Katy Perry, country music, and flying monkeys are inspirational. inspirational. <laughs> barfing. Ew. <laughs> I think they're inspirational for barfing. Got it. <laughs> dating. They're inspirational for barfing while dating. Yes. Ew. Who wants to barf With while they family. date? With your family? Ew. <laughs> okay. <laughs> End of that story. It's getting twisted. <laughs> puppy kisses, especially. Especially puppy kisses. <laughs> okay, so that is kind of a fun way to do a spin on apples to apples. Um, they can get really weird and interesting. Um, sometimes they're just really stupid. It's all depending on how you pull it together. Um, but I do suggest at some point having fun and um, telling some stories. Um, okay, we're gonna move on to the next one. So the last board game, board card game? Combination, actually. Um, the last board game, though, that I'm gonna show you is um, one that was a gift, and then we ended up buying some add-ons for it. It is unlimited in the changes you can make to it and how you decide to play it. Um, and it was a gift from my mom and, um, it was one of those, again, that took us a minute to get into, but we were super competitive. And once we got into it, man, uh, it is a crack up. This one is my husband's favorite game. So when we pick our game nights, my husband will take a turn. I'll take a turn. My daughter will take a turn and it never fails. My husband picks Munchkin, my daughter picks Clue and I pick Sequence. Um, those are our top three, uh, especially if it's a weeknight. And then from there, uh, we get into these other games after that. So, Munchkin is primarily a card game. Um, but it does have a board to keep track of your levels if you get the deluxe edition. And um, you are trying to get to 10 levels. And it gets super funny. Um, so this is the board. You can go to 10 levels or you can change it and you can go to 20. So that's the basic of it. You have a little, um, a little uh, piece that says um, you choose what color you are and based on the color you choose it depends on what gets a special boost. Um, you have door cards and you have treasure cards. Um, so basically you're going to get a setup of cards and we'll probably show in a video clip of this one um this gets a little bit more complicated to explain on a short video like this um but you're going to end up with bonuses and this is a bonus usable by a wizard only so you're you have a class and your class is your either a wizard or a warrior or um a cleric um there's something else there's a few of them and then you have a race, which is either like an elf or dwarf or human. Um, you can make yourself have two classes if you get a certain card. You can have two races if you have a certain card. And each of these things come with a bonus. Like a dwarf, you can hold um, an extra card in your hand. An elf, you get an extra level if you help somebody win. 
something um you well you have to pick a sex at the beginning female or male and then you can actually curse somebody and make them change their sex or you open the door and you get cursed and you have to change your sex um you fight monsters um so like this is a level 16 hippograph um will not pursue anyone level three or below your bad stuff you are stomped and chomped you drop things as you flee starting with the player on your right each player takes one treasure card from in front of you or without looking from your hand and if you beat this one you get two levels or four treasures so um again it's very it gets more complicated in how to play it but it is a strategic game but it's also a luck of the draw game um and who you're going to be friends with in the game um it's super fun it gets it's very um <sighs> it takes a lot at first to learn it but once you get it you're good so this one i would probably stick with this is ages 10 and up i would probably stick with the ages 10 and up um be, unless they're like playing with you um sharing your hand because it's going to take a little bit to understand all the ins and outs of it um but it gets super fun and it changes like we never get through a whole deck of cards um it'll be funny to watch if we're ganging up on my husband or um emily and my husband are ganging up on me and it gets to be a crack up and then oh my gosh you got in uh, divine intervention and you magically won so it gets it gets kind of fun so um that is our um the last card slash board game um, that I'm going to share with you. And then we have one more game, but stay tuned for some of the clips from this game. So obviously when talking about games, um, there's more than just board games. You have card games, and we grew up playing uh, Rummy and Gin and Rook and Phase 10, um, Uno, um, I'm trying to think, Spades and Hearts. I mean, we played games that were super competitive. Um, my mom even created a game at one point in time. Uh, we played solo card games um, like... Um, Kings in the Corner and Solitaire and so forth. Um, so uh, we also like playing BS. Um, that can get kind of fun. But um, I wasn't going to include those in this video because that's literally for the most for most of them like a deck of cards. Um, usually you might have a special deck. There's games like Left Center Right that are super fun and easy to have. Um, but the one thing that I am going to share with you is one of our favorite games. Now, I have a soft spot for collecting something. Some people collect, like, marbles, um, dolls. I don't know. They collect all kinds of different things. I love dice. I absolutely love dice. I actually can't find them all because we move some stuff around, and I think they're in a the box in the garage. But we play Tenzi. And we are super competitive with Tenzi. It's very loud in the house when we play Tenzi. And we have lots of fun colored dice. So we play, we'll play. we play the traditional Tenzi. Um, this should, once I have all my dice in here, it should probably be closer up to here. Um, but I really, really, really love dice. So um, you will do the half and half Tenzi where you're trying to get like you have to call your numbers ahead of time and get half eyes or half twos or whatever and then um we'll do the tower one um it's just fun it's a whole lot of fun i'm gonna do one and six i think i'll do two and four two and four okay <laughs> i don't really have let it go Oh, yes. Did you just say, ah! Ten, uh, tensies, halfsies, halfsies, tensies. Same number? One. 
Uh, you want to the same number? Yeah, same number. Okay. Let's go. Woo-hoo! Nancy! I highly suggest if you don't do it or if you have a hard time, everybody's busy, or you're trying to find that time or family time, games are great. It can take a while at first. My daughter was definitely not always on board with trying a new game. And um, it can be a little bit, especially if it's not a game that one person wants to play, but it's a good way to teach, taking turns, sharing, good sportsmanship right <laughs> um it's something fun to do when it's raining and cold outside and you have to be stuck in the house it's a source of tons and tons of laughter um and there's so many options out there you can find uh, a lot of these on amazon um at your big box stores you can find some of these at um second hand stores just make sure all the pieces are there um so there's so many different options and it's just a good way to spend time with the family and have good old family fun and you learn a lot about yourself and other people while playing games with them um and i mean as a parent i think it's a good teaching time but also a good time to just know watch and learn who your kid is um and your spouse i would love to hear what your favorite games are for your family and um, if you have played any of these or if you decide to go try these uh, let me know we are always in the mood for playing games uh, even if it's something simple oh Chinese checkers chess all that stuff so have some family time it doesn't matter if the weather is not great get together have some family time play some games uh, have some laughs and let me know what your favorites are subscribe Put, turn on that notification bell and stay tuned for some more fun videos coming from our family to yours.